We're going to go to the next and last point of this evening, which is going to be presented by um, Daniel Plasch from Club Commission and Gilad. And they're going to talk a little bit about their project. Um, um, uh, sorry, I'm just a little bit lost. I'm talking a little bit about um, spaces and like more into going more into the details of gentrification and what kind of modeling they've came came up in the last few years to identify um, spaces for a new club culture and alike. And I pass it on to Daniel first, who's going to give you a little presentation. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much for inviting me and having me speak here. I am going to tell you a little bit about uh, spaces. And um, yeah, maybe uh, just quickly about myself. Um, I grew up in Berlin. I have studied law and have been running um, a few clubs too. It was the villa in Friedrichshain and uh, then the Stadtbad in Wedding. After that, I was curating a music studio space in Neukölln and I am um, active in the club commission and I will tell you a little bit about what I am doing there uh, together with my lovely colleagues. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, my department <laughs> would be the space department. I was, uh, when I prepared the presentation, I was uh, thinking, how do you actually uh, translate the word Arbeitskreis and uh, yeah, I found space department quite uh, an interesting um, way to name it. So I'm going to tell, tell you a little bit about uh, what uh, the space department of the club uh, commission in Berlin does. Basically, we're saving spaces and we're creating spaces. First, I want to tell you a little bit about the difficulties of a growing city. We all know um, that the agglomeration rooms in uh, all over the world, uh, and as well in Berlin, um, are filling up, and um, they are getting uh, more and more populated, uh, and uh, we are witnessing um, certain processes happening and uh, these processes um, basically lead to a disappearing and a um, pushing out of uh, experimental spaces, of uh, creative spaces that uh, people have been building up in the past uh, decades and that basically uh, turned Berlin into what it is and to this like very unique, vibrant and uh, very active cultural center that has a worldwide image uh, to be a very, very liberal and open uh, space for ideas and for all kinds of ways of living, for all ideas and um, it's just uh, yeah, a very, a very easy city also to survive. And um, since the rents are going up and um, conflicts are arising as the city is getting more and more dense, so uh, places and spaces that have, you know, people, for example, um, trafficking through uh, a club, for example, um, obviously cause certain noises, therefore conflicts with the people that live around it. And um, these uh, conflicts are also the reason for uh, many people to have uh, problems keeping their, um, yeah, their safe spaces, their uh, clubs, their galleries. Um, sometimes bars and, um, yeah, let's say creative spaces in general. So the problem um, emerging from that is that there is not enough new people coming up that um, keep uh, this vibrant uh, Berlin alive uh, and this very, um, this very interesting Berlin that always has, you know, like a new idea and uh, and and it's 
unique and very own interpretation of a way of life and how uh, life should be. So, um, yeah, this club scene, uh, especially, I mean, the creative scene in general, but uh, especially the club scene uh, is very essential for Berlin. And it is also very essential for its economic success of the past years. And um, because many people haven't understood, but it was the reason why Berlin became the startup city, the leading startup city, in uh, Europe is because of its nightlife. The young talents came to Berlin and therefore the, the startups had to come here because this is where the talents are, this is where the creative people are that are going to move the future. So, um, yeah, internet companies and uh, companies in general um, are coming to Berlin uh, in order to have a workforce and that is actually, you know, able to bring their um, endeavors forward. And um, yeah, um, because of um, these conflictual situation and um, this process uh, of gentrification um, and what uh, this does to the uh, free spaces in our city, uh, we thought it would be very smart to um, to, to, to um, create an infrastructure where people can turn to, um, can turn to in order to um, tell their problems, to, um, to, to, to get a consultation, um, how, to, how to basically maybe ease uh, conflicts, uh, how to proceed with neighbors or other people that might... Um, endanger um, yeah, an ongoing peaceful way of coexistence and um, therefore we founded this um, a space department uh, to actually target um, all of these um, issues that come with uh, running a, a, a vital space that sometimes even um, causes some noise after eight o'clock at night. So um, we have basically built up a network of experts in the field of uh, real estate, in the field of um, dealing with administrations, with all the rules, and we all know that there's lots of them and that we do have to uh, live by them in order to keep our places uh, safe. Uh, and therefore, um, it's needed that uh, you have an infrastructure as a creative that you can turn to that is not necessarily the administration at first. It should be um, an organization that speaks the same language, that um, is aware of the problems that you have uh, in order to, um, to understand them first and to then solve them together. Um, yeah, and uh, this... Uh, the space department is also talking to uh, real estate developers and, um, and owners and investors to show them the perspectives um, that can, can, can arise when offering creative spaces to creative people. And um, we also uh, tell them about the risks. Uh, we tell also the creatives about you know, certain risks as uh, sometimes the interests are very different and um, we're trying to align them, we try to bring um, two groups that um, are not necessarily always walking hand in hand um, to do so because a city that is moving closer and closer together also means that um, the people living in it, and the interests that are um, being in the city also need to move closer and closer, and uh, we need to level it out in order to keep um, our city interesting. Yeah, and another task of the uh, space department is um, the stakeholder dialogue. Uh, it is very important uh, for us to keep in touch with uh, administration, uh, with the city government, um, with uh, real estate, um, city-owned real estate companies, 
in order to um, in order to examine um, the potential uh, usage of um, yeah projects or um, objects in order to make uh, use of them in an, in a creative way. Um, what we're trying also then is um, this one thing that I've been kind of talking about was also, you know, to save spaces in case there's um, things happening, like there's um, a, a new project, a real estate project um, uh, being developed and it moves uh, suddenly very close to an existing club. We have just heard about um, this in the previous, in the previous um, uh, talk here. Um, you do have uh, the problem of, yeah, basically making it work um, between uh, the new people coming that obviously have a right uh, to sleep at night and uh, you um, as maybe the club, uh, or the person that runs a club and you obviously have the right to do so as well. Um, so this is the saving part, but um, we are now trying to also create new spaces because it is very important that you do find ways uh, to create new spaces in order um, to yeah to, to keep uh, to keep the, the city moving also and uh, to create possibilities and opportunities for uh, younger uh, players and new um, stakeholders that want to realize themselves and um, that want to experience um, what this uh, city brings. Um, so basically, uh, what happens is um, that we were thinking it would be nice uh, to create an infrastructure where um, real estate owners contact us. We are viewing and reviewing the space. Basically, we go and look at it. We see, okay, is uh, uh, the building area, the Baugebiet, um, is that the right one to maybe uh, to even have a club there? Maybe it's not a club, but maybe something um, alike is possible, a creative space in, po in, in, in general maybe, of, um, of maybe a, a different kind of uh, creative use. And um, and then we are going um, yeah into like regular team meetings and uh, we're talking about the spaces and the po possibilities and opportunities and um, the potential of uh, uh, such spaces and then uh, we are trying to match um, such objects uh, with the people that uh, might be the right ones to use it and because not everybody fits to everybody that is um, as we all know it's a tricky process uh, to find out who is best for uh, which space this is obviously uh, it always depends how big is the space uh, how difficult are the conditions that you have to work under um, and obviously what are the conditions of um, the the offer and um, not every actor, cultural and club owner, uh, uh, cultural actor or club owner is able uh, to, yeah, to realize any space that is given to him. So you, you always have to kind of see um, and match the strong points of everybody with one another in order to uh, have a successful um, project uh, to be starting. A club, in, a club um, in, in 2020, well, before they had to all shut down, um, is by far not just a club anymore. And um, I just wanted to take uh, a minute to um, kind of let everybody know that obviously club events uh, in club spaces or creative spaces are um, often um, the, the way to go. That obviously also has to do with um, the economic factor of it. But um, a lot of these spaces uh, do have a lot of exhibitions. They run festivals of all kinds, of art festivals as well, not just music. Um, they offer cultural workshops 
Um, they uh, have installations, sound installations, uh, or light installations. And uh, many of them actually offer all kinds of pop-up concepts, such as food markets, art markets, and uh, sometimes also flea markets. Um, just to give you an overview that a club is not a club. And now the mouse doesn't want to do what I want. Now it does. Yeah, and um, basically our service has uh, a positive effect um, uh, for everybody because including creative areas in your real estate project or in your real estate endeavor um, has a, a certain very positive effect uh, such as uh, it improves uh, the neighbor, like the, the the living quality of the neighborhood. Basically, when you know the neighbors can go and have, you know, maybe can eat there or have like a beer garden and or have a, just a col cultural, a cultural space that is accessible. That is ob obviously always, um, yeah, is is always uh, improves basically just um, your 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 neighborhood in a very nice uh, way. It also um, creates uh, creative, like it gives creative impulses and such impulses are always helping also to develop uh, the economical and uh, the cultural potential of uh, a community and a neighborhood. Um, and therefore it can uh, create new jobs and uh, just also, yeah, it's just a, a better work environment when there's culture involved uh, and around you. And um, also, in case you make your um, real estate development more accessible to people, um, it will be more accepted by the community and it will be easier for you um, to actually develop the space. And um, it is always very important to give something back to the community because um, that way the space gets uh, a very special kind of value and, um, and a very uh, a special position um, in, the, in the community. Yeah, and the sustainable city development promotes a healthy community um, and is definitely uh, very essential for our modern way of living. And it has always been in the past. So far, about um, uh, the... Uh, the theory um, of what we're doing in our space department. <laughs> and um, I thank you for your attention. So far, it's been a bit dry and maybe theoretical. And, um, and now I am happy to invite Gilad into the circle to have a chat about a, a practical project that we're working together. Hello. Hello, Gilad. How's it going, Daniel? Very, very good. Long time no see. Long time no, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. And uh, now in this very different uh, setting of our usual it is. setting. It's Last not, time, it's not the first place I imagined we're going to meet after the quarantine period. Very right. much so. That's the that's the same what I thought. Uh, last time we certainly didn't have any distance issues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were way and close, way too close. <laughs> yes, way too close, way too close. <laughs> but um, we've been safe. Yeah, tell us a little bit about um, uh, what you're doing and um, what we're doing. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's certainly exciting as uh, the city always develops and the city is always changing and we need to embrace these changes and developments in order to, yeah, to have a word also in the changes because, you know, always saying it has, so, it has been so much better in the past or, you know, whatever, uh, that doesn't help anybody. We need to, uh, you know, make use of our right to create and this is what um, we are all willing to do together in order to create a livable city. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, 
I am the R&D manager at a, at a developer, a real estate company based in Berlin for uh, the past around 20 years. Uh, the company is called HCM. Uh, and I lead a team of research and development. What we do is um, basically pick up our antennas into different fields uh, and areas that we find uh, that are relevant for us when we think of and when we envision our spaces and what we want them to, uh, to be. Um, so one of the more interesting uh, projects that we're working on at the moment is uh, an old beer factory in uh, Schöneweide, in Tripto Köpenick. Very German. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And this is a very interesting story. It's a very interesting place also. The whole thing around it is completely uh, unique. Um, it was established in the late eight 19th century and um, so, so quite a while ago, and since then it really reflected the German or the Berlin history kind of in its, in its own way. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it wasn't only a, a beer factory in the 20s, for example, it had its own beer garden. It's located right on the Spree, so they had their beautiful patio on the, on the Spree side with a beer garden. And then uh, after the war, you know, it was under GDR, so of course it was a state-owned beer. Right, one of the more successful ones in the city, uh, or known ones, let's say. And, um, and then in the mid-90s, uh, after the fall of the wall, it didn't survive the economical changes. And basically, ever since, it's been abandoned. Um, and, you know, some, one would say dead, but actually, uh, it really um, received its kind of second chance, it's after life period, as a heaven for uh, street art. And this place is just super, I mean, it's a super amazing to, uh, to look at and to go and tour. Um, it's basically, it's very big, it's very huge, it has 14 buildings, it's around 45,000 square meters, so it's quite a large uh, area to check out, and it's just a, basically a museum, a huge gallery for, for street art. Uh, for spontaneous pieces and for more uh, planned and, and uh, uh, really serious art uh, or artists uh, that made their art there. And um, yeah, it's been like that for a while. Uh, the owner of the, the company, the investor, found that place uh, and uh, fell in love and uh, decided that this is uh, his and ours next project. And uh, from there, it, uh, it's, uh, well, not yet history, but hopefully it will be <laughs> uh, soon. And um, so what we're doing there, long story short, is um, we are creating a uh, center for culture and art um, that will live alongside um, technology, innovation, science. So these two kind of come together and, and work together and complement each other. The nice thing is that it's really big and, and, and uh, at the same time kind of intimate. So there's a feeling when you're inside that, uh, you know, it's, uh, although it's very, very large, you're, you feel kind of your area. It's not that you're estranged from, from all the rest. So, um, and what my team mainly does is, uh, other than, you know, educating ourselves about different fields that we would like to bring in as content to the place, um, is uh, also uh, build a network and try to reach out to those people from, from those fields that we think of connecting to, and even if it's not bringing them as, as potential tenants in the future, uh, just uh, learning from them and knowing about them is already, you know, a, a task in itself. Uh, which is also how we uh, connected uh, with you guys and how, uh, you know, for us it was an obvious uh, phone call to make uh, to Club Commission uh, to see how we can cooperate together because, um, I, I, you know, you go into that place and uh, one of the things that you say as a Berliner or at least as, some, as a person who lived here for a while is you go into a room and you're like, Oh, I get this should be a club. I see a party. Right, I see <laughs> yeah. a party. Probably <laughs> many parties happened here also. Yep. And, then, um, and then you say, this is the perfect place for the club. And then you go to, to the room next door, 
And you're like, ah, you know, you know what? No, this is maybe the, the perfect place for the club. And then you go to the other place and you go down the stairs and up the stairs and left and right and it's a total maze and connected with tunnels and it's completely crazy. Um, and then you reach a place, a huge room, and you're like, no, actually, this uh, should be the, the next club. So, obviously, uh, all of us in the team really want a club to, uh, <laughs> to take part uh, in that space. And that's how we reached out to you guys, and, uh, and it's going very well. I mean, um, I think we found a connection immediately, and we kind of were on the same page, yeah. uh, understanding each other, what we, how we see the place. And, Which is also a challenge. I mean, first of all, um, you know, it wasn't always that the uh, real estate developers uh, were going into the spaces and thought the same that we always thought of like, whoa. This could be a nice place. I, I, this is a party, yeah. you know? And uh, obviously the people saw more like, okay, this is, a, this is an office. <laughs> so um, it is really nice that, um, you know, real estate developers um, actually opening up their their um, ways of thinking and their perspectives and also see the value that a creative space brings to a place um, yeah. as well. And, you know, of course, there's also difficulties um, that come with it. But if you, when you plan from the beginning on, um, you can actually eliminate a lot of the potential conflicts. You can work with materials. You can work, you know, with, like, building the things the right way from the start. Obviously, um, yeah, it just enables you to um, to have uh, to have more things running parallel, um, and actually having a, a very lively place, you know, day and night. Because this is obviously also something that is really nice to have uh, a space that is, uh, yeah, that is that is living uh, any any time of the day. And um, a club in Berlin is definitely able to bring. A, a such life to a place and uh, so we were really happy that um, you were thinking this way and um, it is also obviously um, sometimes a, a challenge to find the right language so what we understand ourselves uh, are to be in a way is that we're the link because we do understand uh, the club culture and uh, the language and uh, the processes and the little bit of a beautiful chaos that, uh, you know, this culture brings uh, with it on the one hand, but we also understand the interests and the realities yeah. um, of um, developing uh, a space, yeah. especially a space like uh, the old brewery, which is, uh, yeah, definitely a very beautiful premises. And um, I also think there's a lot of potential and it can definitely be like a, a hub for a whole neighborhood, like yeah. a big part yeah. of the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. What would you, <coughs> sorry to add on that, mm -hmm. what would you say separates the investor that is behind Bianquel in, in this moment mm -hmm. than to what we call the bad guys of this developing business? Like, what is the approach? Like, how are they different in like... Sustainability. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sustainability is also a big thing, but I think it's uh, just a state of mind uh, that he has that is to um, to look around you and uh, understand that you need to that you should and you want to fit yourself to the environment and not only fit the environment to you right and uh, especially in a city like berlin that has so much such a rich uh, backpack you know uh, many things of course it's not only the club culture i'm sorry if i if i <laughs> what but um um, I think it's that kind of understanding that he, he wakes up in the morning with. He's also a guy who would kind of, that's kind of off topic, but he would also, I think, get bored of doing uh, your um, usual producing money kind of real estate development. I think it, it's, not, it's not what he wants and it's not uh, what he's going for. So these two things connected are kind of, uh, I think, what separates us and then, of course, you know what it comes with. So the team that uh, naturally, with a, with a guy like that being, uh, you know, the CEO company and the owner and uh, the investor and the entrepreneur, then it also affects the team around and who who are the people that that are that come around him and who he he yeah. brings in, and that's how the the entire uh, thing has a, I guess, a different vibe than other than your other uh, you know usual real estate companies. Um, 
Yeah, I think the, the, the cool thing maybe that I uh, didn't mention is that uh, one of the main goals is uh, to keep the, and preserve the, the, the place as is as much as possible, of course. Some of the buildings are completely rotten and have to go. But um, we're going to uh, do our best to keep, you know, a good percent of the, of the buildings and uh, to renovate them. And the new buildings that are going to be built around are going to be, of course, you know, connected uh, um, to, uh, to, to the looks and to the environment and not just some sort of a, I don't know, how to make the most space out of this area. Yeah. But how to... Um, complement the architectural styles with with another layer. It already has a, a couple of layers because right, it was um, established in 1882. So it started from there. This this uh, traditional red brick buildings uh, with beautiful ornaments on, around the windows and uh, etc. And then um, it developed to to more uh, the, to the 20s area that was a bit more kind of like square shaped. And then you have also two large buildings that were built in the 70s and 80s during the GDR times, and they were com something completely different, but somehow you worked really... You can definitely really tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Being there, you can tell. But somehow complement the place perfectly, right? And uh, these are also, um, uh, even though they're not under Denkmalschutz, under monumental uh, preservation law, uh, we're still going to go for keeping them because just why? Why? If it's not rotten... Somebody has uh, sometimes al already put a lot of thought in it, you know, uh, to... Definitely. It's, it's, uh, it's already part of the characteristic of the place. So, you know, like, uh, mm. why try and make it something else? And it's, mm. It has so much history behind it and so much stories um, that we kind of want to preserve. And this is also true to the street art that's happening there, uh, which is a bit of a harder task. Um, since some of the, the You're buildings... You're preserving most of it, right? We're, I don't know if we're, we're preserving most of it, but we're doing everything we can to preserve the most that's possible Yeah. in accordance to what's going to actually happen there. So it depends. It depends uh, on what's going to happen in each specific building. But basically the idea is, yeah, to preserve. And uh, even if it means to take down a wall in one part and put that wall somewhere else, we're going to do that. <laughs> that's amazing, so. actually. Yep. That's cool. So there's usually there's a, a solution. Okay. Um, Daniel, coming back to your presentation and your work for Club Commission in preserving spaces, and I know you've been in a lot of personal fights with landlords and like <laughs> buying up spaces or trying to preserve spaces. Um, I think a lot of people uh, think about the question, what power do we actually have against people that are not like this person, this investor that we are talking about, which seems to be like a lighthouse project in a sea of sharks. So... Yeah. Um, well, obviously, um, I would not say that the, the weapons are equal, <laughs> but we are many. And um, we do have, um, as club, in parentheses maybe, but put the emphasis on culture, you know, as, as being a cultural movement. Um, also more acceptance, more and more acceptance um, in, in the middle of the society because, you know, back in the days, club, what is that, discotheque, it's like, you know, I mean, legally we're basically still uh, in one category with a brothel and a casino, that this does not count, uh, you know, that this does not have any... Um, yeah, realistic outlook on what's actually happening is clear. So mm -hmm. there's so much more. It's experimental places. It's it's an incubator of ideas, of of creativity, of also I would say peace in within a generation. You know, many many different people are coming together and having you know a good time, and it's also a safe space for marginal marginalized groups. Um, and it's 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 just a very special place to be at um, a nice Berlin party. Um, it's just a very unique experience, I think. I mean, obviously, there's uh, things like that all over the world, but I would say we have made a very special culture out of it. And I think this, um, you know, wide acceptance um, gives us uh, the power to speak on eye level to politicians, um, to administration, 
to also the neighbors and the community that used to, you know, think the devil is uh, uh, dancing in a circle in there. But since they realized, no, it's like, you know, it's like us back in the days, just uh, maybe different music. And um, so, you know, this, this helps us to also maybe mobilize um, a wider crowd in order to fight for our spaces. And then you have, you know, demonstrations, you have politicians that are very much able to move their opinions when you're out on the streets, you know, marching for something and asking for something and they realize, oh, okay, it's not just, you know, a particular interest of a small group, it's actually my potential voters. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think this is, um, is a way, this mobilization of, of people, also the education of, of people, that is our uh, weapon in order to also, yeah, save the spaces, especially educating um, also the owners, you know, not, not all the owners actually really know what we're doing there. And um, it's important and that's a lot of work and that's the work that we're willing to do. Uh, to actually, um, as I said, to present the opportunities, the potential that comes with it, the positive effects, but also, um, you know, telling them about um, the problems, the conflicts, because every development comes with difficulties and chal challenges. It's just a matter of which path do you want to take, you mm -hmm. know, and the challenges will be different ones when you do this. You know, if you obviously um, have a, a high tower of offices, it's maybe a lively uh, during the day, but it's dead at night. And is this an area where you want to live? You know, it's, it's, also, it's very important what happens on the first floor of your building also, you know, and sure. that's, that basically, um, <coughs> you know, gives, um, yeah, gives off into the, um, a close neighborhood mm. and, uh, yeah, the acceptance of the community. Yeah, <clears throat> I couldn't agree more, especially when it comes down to, I love the project that you're describing, but when I think of clubs having to move outside the city in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. then it's also kind of putting people back in the closet and where society can't see them in a way. Like, the, it always has this like bittersweet taste, you are happy that creative spaces are being created, but it would be better if they would be closer to the actual lives of people. So my mom or my grandpa or my, my whoever. Um, well, my, gr my grandma <coughs> actually lived yeah. very much close there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, but in the sense that, like, that, that they, this is very much in the presence of everybody's eyes, um, especially when it comes down to maybe l living realities that are a bit different, you know, than mm -hmm. what the majority of society is living, you know? And I always felt like Berlin was that kind of space, and that's changing. Um, I do want to uh, ask you, Daniel, and also you, obviously we are in the year of a pandemic, you have worked uh, instrumentally on, on United Restream, and uh, the question is like, how is that affecting clubs? I mean, we've heard a lot about it, but now that it's slowing down a little bit, or what seems to be slowing down, how does it affect the developing and also the current state of clubs? Like, so it's a two, two way questions in both your directions. Well, I would give it to you first. Um, well, first, before that, if I may, just uh, just a little uh, note on the, so Trepto Köpenick is actually uh, not so, out, so much outside of the city. <laughs> and uh, um, it's, it's less than we think, and it's the, the idea is really to, uh, to bring life also to other areas of Berlin. So you can look at it from that angle as well and say, hey, that's really positive, actually, that we're bringing life to Trepto Köpenick, to a place that uh, was lacking culture and art and, uh, and uh, yeah, the society kind of uh, um, deciding for themselves what's going to happen in their, in their space. And uh, I think, so, so things are already happening and, and there's movement of artists and, and, uh, and musicians and, um, and students d uh, down or east towards Trepto Köpenick. And I think that um, us being there and uh, developing that huge place will also be part of a, a kind of a grandiose movement going uh, to another or taking, taking part in another place of the city. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. Um, that you know, it's kind of being maybe uh, it's it's less visible. The the club scene is less visible in in some places, or it gets kind of kicked out from some places. But then, 
uh, okay, so if we can't be here, we're going to be here. This is not less Berlin than any, any, any other place, kind of. And, you know, so we can look at it that way, kind of the half full glass uh, as well. Um, and to the, to the COVID-19 uh, uh, topic, this is really a, a mystery, and uh, it's really something that we, it's hard to say how things will, how things will look uh, and what are going to be exactly the... Uh, what's going to exactly be the effect of this, especially when we talk more about the long term. Um, we are trying to, uh, you know, to uh, do our best to uh, work as usual and, um, you know, uh, of course, considering the, all, all the different regulations and, and uh, the new, you know, um, health measurements that uh, we need to protect ourselves with, but in accordance uh, with the project, we're really trying to go forward and to pick up whatever it is that we left behind three months ago and, and try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, continue with that from where we left it. And I think that um, uh, this place is unique enough to attract these things and uh, to pick it up and go forward, even in these hard times. So that's what we're working on, at least. That's good. I mean, we all know that there will be a post-corona time. What we don't know is what it's going to look like. And, um, it, you know, the, the work that we've done, uh, especially also the club uh, commission, but also the great places that, um, you know, have been existing um, in Berlin and that are, um, you know, worldwide uh, known um, has, you know, enabled us to have a position um, to ask for, you know, governmental help right now um, due to the fact that um, clubs are not um, subsidized, unlike, um, you know, states-owned uh, opera houses or uh, theater houses or um, also orchestras and uh, such. And um, because obviously this pandemic was a sudden, you know, 100% impact, like closure, the closure of all places. And it's a very special uh, kind of, you know, moment in history. And we all don't know what it, what, how it's going to play out. I mean, you know, you, everybody asks themselves, when is it going to reopen? and under which circumstances, because I don't know if, if my club, you know, holds 1,200 people. Mm. I'm not going to open it for 120. It's yeah. sad. And I mean, that's like, that's depressing. It's depressing. It's also depressing on my account because 120 people are not going to, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I can't, I can't sell the ticket for 150 yeah. euros. Yeah. So it's better off to be closed. It's better off to be closed. Like I'm because otherwise I'm insolvency is, you know, uh, yeah. around the corner for a second time. So, yeah. um, and then I won't be eligible for help potentially, you know, because you're able to open it. Mm. So, um, we do need to work a little bit more on, um, you know, to have, uh, the legal status of not having to pay rent. Um, because of um, a disruption of our basic foundation of business, you know, um, which the pandemic, I think, uh, with no doubt is. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we have to be careful um, with when to open, you know, because nobody wants to read in the newspaper super spreader event from two weeks ago yeah. um you know caused a spike in and <laughs> has made this isn't that many people sick because this is really bad for you know obviously press and it will obviously play in the hands of the forces that would like to see the clubs closed for longer and have them be reduced to a level that they might allow in their um, way of looking at the world. Mm. And um, I think that's dangerous. So we need to, um, I know, you know, there's many existences, um, but we need to, I think, work out a way of dealing with the situation now, securing and saving everybody um, and keeping it at pause until um, this damn virus is gone and or in check enough to have a risk that is 
calculable and um, that we can all kind of like live with in a way, you know, and then actually proceed mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and, 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 see, and see what we can do because yeah, opening too early, I don't think it's going to help anybody. That's a good take on it, I think. Yeah. Um, I think we're really in the midst of the storm, you know, still. Don't, and uh, yeah, it's, I we're mean, thinking like, three hey, months, so how is, right? it, how is it going to be post-corona now that we're post-corona? We're still so talking we're about the totally financial crisis and that's 10 years ago, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. And we're uh, actually totally not in post-corona times. So not, not at even, all, we don't three months in. <laughs> yeah. So it's really hard to say. I think the, the, the bottom line answer to, to your question is that it's really, really hard to say and it would be uh, presumptuous to try and... and really say what we're going to do about it, kind of, as sad as it sounds, right? But... Unfortunately, it's a health crisis because, you know, club culture is always really good uh, dealing with crisis. Yeah, <laughs> that's Because usually it opens up a lot of space and it creates, um, you know, in society, it also creates an edgy kind of vibe which has uh, sometimes also pushed music in a certain direction, you know? It has... Um, led to a lot of, um, you know, technical developments, musical t developments, mm -hmm. and just different ways of, um, you know, like also partying and being together. But this time it's a health crisis. So, um, you know, we can't be together. We can't, um, you know, kind of, we cannot negotiate the way of living in a club, you know? Like, how do we want our... Um, well-being together to, to look like and um, that, is, that is very sad and um, because of the social distancing and all of that we can't even see one another's emotions and uh, you know and, 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 and the call you know an online call is just not the same no. there's so many misunderstandings happening at yes, this, uh, like at, at this uh, moment right now and we, we kind of think we are actually proceeding more or less normal but we don't know how it's going to play out. And yeah, it's like it's been three months. Uh, so we don't know if our money is going to be um, worth the same in two years, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we don't know how, you know, real estate is going to, how the real estate market is going to look like in a few years. Um, obviously, there is kind of, I think, realistic uh, outlooks on it already possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also think it's interesting times because a lot will change yeah. and maybe there's opportunities there's um, things opening up people obviously or certain companies need to liquidate so there's you know yeah. more more movement and and the resource room maybe yeah. it's a chance for the city to uh you know to act and to um implement yeah. Um, ideas that they have been talking about in the past of actually buying, uh, you know, buying a real estate back yeah. um, in order to have something to give into the market in bad times or to control pricing or uh, such. I think you're right. I think in every crisis you can find the opportunities. Opportunity. For example, you know how they uh, completely enlarged the, the bicycle lanes in Berlin? Yeah, you know, has become an yeah. especially things we Wolfsburg, thought would never be possible. Exactly. So that was like, okay, now we have a good. This is a good time to uh, maybe call this uh, bicycle lane. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a bicycle lane, and yeah. um, you know, the temporary somehow becomes permanent, and uh, I guess that's one positive thing that happened with that. Yeah, but um, those social distancing parties, like... It's yeah, I was going to say, like, I saw a video of someone sitting on a chair listening to a techno DJ. Um, I find it really depressing. <laughs> yes. um, but I also feel like it's getting to the point where people are starting to become reckless. Mm -hmm. So it's good to just have your insights on, like, I agree totally that we cannot even assume what's going to be in three months, in six months, we do have to find solutions yeah. and to think about, crea like about solutions creatively, but it's not in our hands right now. So mm -hmm. um, I agree with you um, on opening too early could be, like, could be another blow yeah. to the club scene that we exactly. haven't seen. And, um, we don't need more bad news. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys. <coughs> Thank you so much for your insights into 
You're here for a long time. We I've should been all, here for a long time. Clap our hands for Lou. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. And we're going to wrap it here. Um, we've heard about a lot of points of the sustainability charter. And um, we also already talked about Leopold, um, about to perform the last song, Paradise. And um, yeah, there's nothing left to say except for thank you for everyone that was involved, spe specifically Timo from Club Commission, thank you. And uh, the Auswärtiges Amt, um, Club Liebe e.V., everyone who was involved behind the scenes as well. Thank you guys, the girls. And yeah, enjoy the last bit of music for tonight. Bye. Thanks for bye having bye. us. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know where to wave. <laughs> Und raus. Und auf. You dry tears to paint a smile. Make me see when I am blind. Turn my water into wine. Celebrate that we're alive, celebrate tonight. You bathe my flaws till I'm baptized. And you can give me a piece of mind. Yes, you're one of a kind. Someone I'll never find again. You're one of a kind. Love is love, it's right. You don't need to hide what you feel inside. Love is love, it's right. You don't need to hide what you feel inside. Ooh, yes, it's true. When I'm with you, I'm in paradise. It feels so right. I cannot imagine another life. Hey. You're a sanctuary. Why should I need a God when you are here? You've got all the magic, my personal Jesus. No one's a better cure. You're all I was praying for. Whoa. Oh, that's right. You don't need to hide what you feel inside. Oh, that you feel inside. Love is love, it's right. You don't need to hide what you feel inside. Ooh, ooh. yes. Yeah.